Hey guys, welcome back to another wet episode with me in the garden. And uh, today I'm doing a little something a little more conservative. Um, so in light of like, I don't know, climate change and, you know, people just, I think, poor management for, with respect to your land or poor in the sense that you don't really understand it. Um, I thought, hey, let's do an episode on one South African indigenous pioneer tree, which gets used to uh, re-establish forest. It is a very fast growing pioneer species uh, and it is called Virgilia oroboides or Virgilia de Viricata, or the Cape Lilac. Um, a very beautiful indigenous tree, uh, very fast growing, gets to about 10 meters in height, uh, well, close on to 20 depending on the species. So between say, I'd say 10 and, 10 and 20 meters. Um, uh, I planted the ones that I'm going to show you about a year and a bit ago. And they are now currently in flower. I'm actually sitting in their shade right now, sort of holding up out of the rain. Um, and yeah, and then uh, it's a nitrogen fixing plant. So uh, that's a very good thing. Uh, for those of you who don't know what nitrogen fixes are, I will put a link in the description so you can go and read a little bit about them. Um, but yeah, without any further ado, let's take a look before I get rained out. All right, okay. So this is, uh, this is um, Virgilia oroboides. Uh, so you, you get a good few different types of Virgilia. Um, I'm not gonna go into the very specific detail of De Vericata versus Virgilia oroboides. Uh, what I will say is that uh, this is Virgilia oroboides. Um, a very beautiful plant occurs along the southern Cape coast of South Africa all the way from the Cape Peninsula right up into the Eastern Cape um, into KZN. Hey guys, so just as a side note I wanted to say uh, something else about this Virgilia oroboides. I'm just actually busy editing the episode for you. Um, Virgilia oroboides um, is the most well-known out of the lot, uh, but De Viricata actually starts, uh, I forgot to mention, they start from about uh, the town of George, um, sort of a little further than George, uh, all the way into uh, the Eastern Cape as well. So they, they basically overlap territories. Um, and then there are a few subspecies as well. So scientists and botanists and things there's still sort of confusion about whether they're actually considered to be a different uh completely different species or whether they're just a a version of the original um so yeah i think the differences are so minuscule um visually that uh my personal opinion is they're probably just the same um De Viricata has got a slightly different color uh, and the flowers are slightly different, but then Oroboides um, also has a slightly different color um, to other Oroboides. So, yeah, um, I think it's on its way to probably changing up and becoming a different, uh, slightly different species. But for now, I think they're pretty much still the same. But hey, um, each, each to their own. And I'm sure once uh, people really do you know, definitive studies, um, will actually know what the, the correct answer is in that respect. So yeah. Okay. Back to the video. Um, and you would find it along forest margins. Um, it gets really tall. This one, I mean, literally these two trees are the same age. I germinated them at the same time and they are now taller than nearly taller than the banana palms. Um, the one closest to the sunlight, which is this one here, is actually coming to flower already, uh, which means it's going to produce copious amounts of seeds. They are short-lived plants, um, short-lived trees, uh, and the, the di stem diameter is about 600 milli millimeters uh, at maturity. Um, let's take a look at the flower. Uh, it's also known as the sweet pea flower, sweet pea tree. Um, yeah, very, very stunning little plant. Uh, 
sorry if you give me tree I keep saying plant um, and it's got a compounded leaf which uh, compound bipinnate leaf which uh, the, the pinna are these little things like the individual uh, little leaflets um, and then this here uh, is one full leaf so so that's a full compound leaf so it literally means uh, the technicality is the way the leaf attaches to the, to the stem of the tree uh, or plant and um, yeah so this is bipinnately compound and that's what this tree is uh, it is evergreen uh, what else can I tell you about it? It uh, in Afrikaans it's called the kierboom, and kierboom literally translates to choice tree because it is the people's choice when it comes to South African trees. If you want shade really fast and quick in America, it's called the Cape Lilac as well, uh, and in Cape Town too, um, and uh, produces seed pods which are velvety and they contain tiny black seeds. Um, the seeds have got to be scarified if you want to germinate them and a really good way of scarifying them is actually just to lay them in uh, hot water for about 24 hours and then the next day you plant them uh, you sow them out in uh, seedling mix uh, any good uh, seedling mix or compost that you can find um, and give them full sun as they as they rise out of the ground um, yeah they were used to make furniture let me show you what the trunk looks like So this one, like I said, is quite young and I can show you how thick it actually is already. Um, the sap was also then used as a starch uh, in earlier days in South Africa and here you can actually see an example of the sap. Uh, sorry about the lighting. Um, let's just grab some of that sap. Uh, uh, that's kind of what the sap looks like. It's very sticky. Sorry, I can't really get that to focus very well. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much like amber and let's stick it back on the tree and yeah because we just basically started this entire um, garden we wanted something that would really just add nutrients you know add really good stuff to the soil um, leaf litter detritus and, and bring birds and, and the birds will then obviously bring a lot of the other seeds which are also forest species um, and and then you'll find uh, other trees coming up underneath um, in a short while so it's got a, it's got a basically a rounded sort of conical shape growth growth style uh, let me just show you what it looks like from a distance away so that's that's the one tree the other one's directly behind that um, it kind of looks like a giant, it's very fern-like, very stunning. Um, and you've got a, usually got a lot of downward growth around the bottom. So literally, uh, you would just cut off all of the uh, branches growing toward the ground. And you would then lift it up off of the ground so you could actually plant things underneath. Uh, there's another one back there. Um, and I really just wanted to calm this area down because it gets really, really super hot. Um, when it is warm and yeah that's that's pretty much uh the jilly oroboides so guys i hope you like this video it's a real quick one and uh i will do a germination video as soon as they produce seed the seeds are viable for at least 30 years recorded it it has been said that they could be uh viable for up to 100 years uh, that hasn't though been proven uh, at least not in any sources that i could find i've often worked with this tree when we do rehabilitation um, of forest margins you would find this tree along the forest margin among some other pioneer species and this one is a really good tree if you've moved into a new space and you're trying to establish a shade garden um, yeah Again, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to go home because I'm going to rain wet. I am already super damp. Okay. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.